imagine stepping into a swampy, humid forest where dragonflies the size of eagles buzz overhead, centipedes longer than a car slither across the ground, and every breath you take feels heavier. This was the Earth during the Carboniferous period, a time when giant insects ruled the skies and the land. But what made insects so enormous back then? And could humans survive, or even live alongside these giant creatures? To understand the age of giant insects, we must travel back to the Carboniferous period, between 359 and 299 million years ago. This was long before the dinosaurs, and Earth was a very different place. The planet was covered in endless swamps and dense forests filled with towering plants like giant ferns, horsetails, and lycophyte trees. The ground was damp and swampy, buzzing with life. But what made this period unique was the enormous size of the arthropods. Creatures like insects, millipedes, and scorpions that ruled the land, sky, and even the water. Flying through the skies was Meganura, a giant dragonfly-like predator with a wingspan of about 2.5 feet, bigger than most modern birds. Meganura would have been a deadly hunter, using its enormous eyes and sharp jaws to catch smaller insects. You can imagine it silently patrolling the swampy forests, its shadow falling on the ground like a bird of prey. Arthropleura, the largest land arthropod of all time, was on the forest floor. It was a millipede-like creature that grew to eight feet long and nearly two feet wide. Although it likely ate plants, its size and armor-plated body would have made it intimidating as it slithered slowly across the ground, moving like a living tank. Creeping through the underbrush was Pulmano Scorpius, a giant scorpion that grew to around 28 inches tall. That's about the size of a small dog. With its powerful pincers and stinger, it would have been one of the dominant predators on land, likely hunting other insects or small amphibians. In the rivers and swamps, lived Megarachne, a massive spider-like creature that measured over 20 inches across, including its legs. At the time, its large armored body and powerful limbs would have made it an efficient predator in the shallow waters, blending in with its surroundings to ambush prey. Even some of the more familiar creatures were supersized. Cockroaches during the Carboniferous grew to four inches long. They would have swarmed across the damp forest floors, feeding on decaying plants. Crickets and smaller insects also grew much larger than their modern descendants, thriving in the oxygen-rich, humid environment. Every corner of this world was alive with giants. The gigantic size of insects during the Carboniferous period wasn't a coincidence. It was the result of one key factor, the Earth's atmosphere. Back then, oxygen levels were far higher than today, reaching 30 to 35 percent compared to the 21 percent we breathe. This oxygen-rich environment allowed insects and other arthropods to grow to sizes that would be impossible today. To understand why, we need to look at how insects breathe. Unlike mammals, insects don't have lungs. Instead, they rely on a system of tracheal tubes, a network of tiny air-filled channels that carry oxygen directly to their tissues. The oxygen enters through small openings called spiracles on the insect's body and spreads throughout these tubes. However, this system has limits. In today's atmosphere, where oxygen is lower, it restricts how large insects grow because it becomes harder to deliver enough oxygen to support larger bodies. Things were different in the Carboniferous period. With more oxygen in the air, the tracheal system became far more efficient. Oxygen could diffuse deeper into insects' bodies, supporting larger sizes without any need for lungs or other adaptations. This meant insects could grow much larger while still meeting their metabolic needs. But oxygen wasn't the only factor at play. The Carboniferous world also had fewer predators. Reptiles were only beginning to evolve. And there were no birds or large flying predators to challenge insects in the skies. Early amphibians, while significant predators, posed little threat to larger arthropods. This lack of competition allowed insects to thrive and dominate the environment. There's also evidence that the Carboniferous climate played a role. 
The world was warm and humid, and the dense forest provided plenty of food and habitat for these creatures. If humans somehow made it to the Carboniferous world, they would quickly realize how hostile this environment was. Every aspect of life would present a unique danger, from the air, to the creatures, and the terrain. First, there's the atmosphere. While the oxygen-rich air might initially feel energizing, it would pose serious risks. Oxygen toxicity would set in quickly, leading to respiratory issues, dizziness, and potentially seizures. The dense, humid air would make breathing harder, as if every inhale were through a thick, wet cloth. Then there's the fire. The high oxygen levels turn the forests into tinder boxes. A single lightning strike or spark could set the swamps ablaze. Fires in the Carboniferous period burned hotter, spread faster, and consumed everything in their path. Escaping these fires through swampy, uneven terrain would be nearly impossible for humans. But the most significant danger would come from the creatures themselves. A dragonfly Meganura might not hunt humans, but having such large predators swooping through the air would make any outdoor activity unnerving. Even a brush with its sharp wings could cause injury. On the forest floor, Arthropleura would likely dominate the underbrush. Though harmless as a plant eater, its size and armored body would mean humans must tread carefully. Accidentally disturbing one could result in an unpleasant encounter, as its weight could injure someone underfoot. Pulmonoscorpius, the giant scorpion, would be an even more significant concern. It might see humans as a threat or competition and defend itself with powerful pincers or a venomous sting. Even smaller creatures like giant cockroaches and beetles would present problems. Swarms of these oversized insects feeding on decaying plant matter would overwhelm humans in their search for food or shelter. A four-inch cockroach may sound tolerable until hundreds of them surround you. Humans might try to turn these massive insects into resources. The exoskeletons of giant arthropods would make excellent tools, weapons, or armor. A fallen Meganura's wings could be a strong, lightweight shelter material. Arthropods themselves, though challenging to hunt, could become a food source, providing protein for survival. Insects thrived in the Carboniferous because of abundant plant matter. Still lacking fruits, seeds, and other familiar crops would make finding food difficult for humans. Without modern tools, we'd rely heavily on scavenging and hunting, but humans would be far from the top of the food chain. Shelter would be critical. With giant insects in the skies and scorpions on the ground, humans would likely build their homes in trees or elevated platforms to stay out of harm's way. Fires might help ward off insects, but fire would be as much a threat in such an oxygen-rich environment as it was a tool. If humans had somehow evolved to live in the Carboniferous world, we would look very different from how we do today. Adapting to the extreme conditions of high oxygen, dense humidity, and a swampy predator-filled environment would have forced our bodies to change over time. First, we would likely develop larger lungs or more efficient respiratory systems to handle the oxygen-rich air. While breathing more oxygen might initially sound advantageous, our modern lungs are not built for it. Over generations, humans might evolve to regulate oxygen intake better to avoid toxicity, developing a way to expel excess oxygen or process it more slowly. Our bodies would likely be leaner and more muscular. Strength and agility would be essential for survival in the swampy, uneven terrain of the Carboniferous forests. Carrying excess weight would be a disadvantage in an environment where you'd need to climb, run, or wade through muddy water to avoid danger. Taller, leaner bodies would help with heat regulation, allowing humans to cope with the thick, humid air. Humans might also develop stronger limbs and grip strength to navigate the forest canopy. In a world where the ground is filled with giant scorpions and massive millipedes, survival might depend on living above them. Climbing trees to escape predators or finding shelter would become a way of life. Over time, we may evolve adaptations like longer fingers or toes to improve our climbing abilities. Our skin would likely adapt as well. With the intense humidity, humans might develop thinner, sweat-efficient skin to stay cool in the oppressive heat. To cope with the swarms of giant insects, a tougher or slightly thicker outer layer could offer protection from bites and stings. Hair might be reduced for better cooling or develop into patches for protection in key areas. Another possibility is the evolution of enhanced senses. In a dark, shadowy forest with limited visibility, humans might evolve better hearing 
or low light vision to detect movement in the underbrush or overhead. Hearing the hum of a giant dragonfly or the scuttling of a massive arthropod could mean the difference between survival and becoming a casualty of the environment. Finally, mental and behavioral adaptations are just as necessary. Humans must develop tools and shelters suited to this harsh, swampy world. Lightweight materials like giant insects' exoskeletons could be essential for crafting weapons, armor, or makeshift structures. Living in small, elevated communities above the ground might become the norm to avoid the dangers lurking below. So, could humans survive the Carboniferous world? It's hard to say. Between the suffocating, oxygen-rich air, the constant risks of wildfires, and giant arthropods ruling the land and sky, we'd face challenges at every turn. Surviving there would push us to adapt in ways we can barely imagine. Becoming leaner, stronger, and more resilient to coexist with creatures like Meganura and Arthropleura. The Carboniferous wasn't just a different time, but a different Earth. It reminds us how life can evolve to fit even the most extreme conditions, only for it all to change again. The giants of that era are long gone, but their fossils tell the story of a world that once belonged to insects. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.